I'm going to talk about um, a project that I've been uh, working on for almost uh, 18 years, and I'm going to talk about it in 18 minutes, so you can imagine this <laughs> it's a difficult, uh, difficult task. But anyway, um, I'm born in the Netherlands, and I moved to New York in uh, 1997, and I work as a sculptor. But before I lived in the Netherlands and... Um, and New York, I lived actually also in New York, of in, in Norway, I'm sorry, in Trondheim. And when I was studying at the Art Academy in Trondheim, I was playing with tables and uh, chaos theories and looking at the society in, um, in a yeah, kind of an abstract way. So here you see a study that I did on, on tables. I kind of photographed them and I looked at them from different angles. And I was trying to understand for myself the meaning of tables. Here you see um, my first kind of literally uh, research about tables. You know, all that uh, tables play, play a very important role in the, the world that we're living in. And it starts at the family table. We all know that when you think about your youth, uh, there is a structure around the table. Your father sitting at the head of the table, who's cutting the, the meat, you know, the Christmas dinner. So this is really, really, that's where it basically all starts my journey with these with the boardroom tables. So in Norway, I, um, or I kind of started to think about how can you divide the current society in different types of tables. So I was looking at more family tables, tables of power, political tables, tables of just justice. And later on, I photographed one of the more uh, traditional historic tables that we have in our society. It is the, uh, the table of the royal court. And in the uh, old uh, Middle Ages and 17th centuries, uh, the, uh, the, the big courts could, could show their, their power in a way through uh, big uh, uh, state banquets where they invited people. Even now today, there are 144 chairs around these tables. This is like a strict given that uh, all the courts in Europe, you'll, you'll find it. So this is one example. Another one is, uh, again, a dining table. Um, this is the uh, Bill Clinton. It's in one of my notebooks that I, uh, I always create in my work. And here you see Bill Clinton at the G7 meeting uh, where all the political leaders are together. And I think this is an, a magical photograph for me because you see the combining of like a very sort of uh, relaxing social gathering. But at the same time, whereas these are the, the, the heads of states of all these major corporation co companies. And on top of it, these waiters around it. They're making this circle, emphasizing this table of power, which I think is really interesting. And now we're going, going to Europe, because when I was living in Norway and playing with these tables, I was really thinking it would be great to do something with Europe and looking at the current situation in Europe at the time. We were talking about uh, 1993, 92. But this photograph later, as you see, this is the, uh, the European Council in Brussels, or basically the future of Europe is uh, decided at the moment. So I'm really going very briefly to this first project, the Table of Power, where uh, my journey started. Um, when I was living in Norway and also before when I was educated in Holland, I really looked at, uh, at society and I was thinking, is, is, is religion really important to us? Or is it like the you know gathering of wealth and... Uh, and I saw around me all these huge billboards with multinationals and uh, everybody wants to have a, the latest car, you know, the latest phone, whatever. And so I thought it would be really, really interesting to make a portrait of Europe by photographing their most important meeting places. And those were, for me, uh, the boardroom tables of the largest uh, industrial multinationals of Europe. So, this is like, you know, the map of Europe. So I, I asked the people who were in the corporate world, is there any kind of listing, you know, like the top 40 or 50 or whatever? And everybody said, you have to work with Fortune magazine. So I picked up the magazine. I started to look at the, the, the first 40 European uh, industrial multinationals, and I just made phone calls. I said, hey, I'm Jacqueline, and I want to photograph your boardroom. And they all thought, you know, who is this crazy Dutch young woman? Because I was like 25 at the time, 26. And uh, they didn't know who, who that 
should re take responsibility for this question. So they were really puzzled, and it took sometimes months to get into these boardrooms. And I was really look working more like a scientist. So I not e even wanted to photograph the table, but I also had all these questions about the use of the table. I really wanted to nail it down and to understand the identity of economic power through a very simple object of a meeting a boardroom table. And so I made notes, like after the shoots, I usually kind of um, scrabbled down in my notebook what was happening, what was the table setting, what was the room setting, were there any kind of weird things, you know, going into the elevator. And of course, hospitality. As a Dutch woman, I love my coffee, so I was wondering, you know, was the coffee really good quality, what were they serving me, etc. And so this is the result of that first project. And you see, half of the, almost half of them are black, and black means in photography that you, you have, you know, you have a misshoot, you kind of, uh, you fail. And so this was a symbol for me, for the corporations who did not allow me to get into their, their boardroom. Fifteen years after I uh, finished that project, you know, I moved to the United States, I became a visiting lecturer at Harvard University, and so my position was completely changed in the art world. And I thought, especially because of the economic crisis around 2007, 2008, it would be really, really interesting to see how the European economic landscape had changed, and also these boardroom tables, what, what had changed. So I picked up the Fortune Global 500, and I started to look at these corporations again. And this is the result of, of the corporations who were participating in black, and then the, the red ones who were... Uh, not. So this is, you see me in the boardroom of uh, GDF uh, Suez. And to, to do a project yet like that, you really need to have a big, big dream, because this is like running a marathon. It's really, re it takes an incredible amount of energy, an incredible amount of resources, and uh, sometimes people thought I was totally crazy, and so it's, it's very, very, very difficult. Um, as you can imagine, all the banks, you know, because this time I included also banks and industrial uh, corporations, or like, sorry, insurance companies. So the banks, they were really like, are you kidding me? You, you want to photograph our boardroom in this really bad economic time? So the Royal Bank of Scotland said no. But you have to call us back in one year from now. Maybe things might change, maybe there might be a better moment. So, you know, like I had to sometimes wait for a year or a half year to call corporations back and to try it again. So this is British Petroleum in London. I thought this was gonna be uh, like uh, really, really difficult, especially uh, after what happened with the oil spill. But they said, no problem, you can come. And the funny thing about this boardroom is that um, they took it over from Sony Ericsson and so it's a very typical luxury IKEA boardroom, I always call it. And uh, the green, green chairs are, of course, you know, a symbol of uh, BP. And it's very, very kind of, uh, kind of low-key. And they wanted to have that, that image of the uh, BP on the... Uh. So this is my tiny little drawing, kind of remembering, you know, where, what the table setting... Tea was served, of course, we're in, in the UK. And here you see which is interesting, you see the difference of, this is Volkswagen, the largest car company in, in Europe and the largest company in, in Germany. And you see on the right side, you see the old boardroom 15 years ago, and it's exactly the same space. And on the left side, you see the new boardroom. And, uh, you know, the, the, the chairs are modernized, but for uh, the largest company in Germany, it's a very, very modest room uh, still. And what was kind of very interesting about this whole story is that when I called up Volkswagen, the guy who was running the PR department, he was exactly the same man as 15 years ago. And he said, Frau Hassing, sind Sie wieder da? And he was like really, really kind of surprised and almost uh, touched when I uh, entered there. This is uh, the largest steel company we, we have in Europe, uh, ArcelorMittal. And the, the table is made of, of, uh, of steel. And this is a very interesting story because they just remodeled this room because the old boardroom was attacked by mine workers. And so they, uh, it was uh, for security reasons, they had to go into a new building, which was really uh, very high up and very, very high security. So it's a very interesting kind of... So here you see also the, 
the setting and coffee and water served in, in beige plastic cups. Details about the... Uh, and this is the uh, Total, um, one of the largest oil companies in, uh, in Europe, in, the, in Paris. It's on the top floor. In very, a lot of these corporations, you have two elevators. You have one, it's only for the executives, so you, you sh they shoot you to the 44th floor. And then the other one is for the, the normal, so-called normal <laughs> people, employees. This is BNP Paribas. It's a very um, large uh, bank in, uh, in uh, Paris. And uh, this is a very historic room, which is really giving you kind of the scoop of the different boardrooms you find right now, a very modernized. But this one is the, the, the room where Na Napoleon uh, married his uh, first wife. And this is, of course, very prestigious because a bank like this has several boardrooms in Paris, but they always, for this kind of uh, projects, they, they pick out the one that is, you know, the most historic and prestigious to show off their power. And this is the largest bank of, uh, of Spain, Banco Santander. On the left side, you see uh, it's outside of Spain, and it's the, the, the largest golf court in Madrid, uh, because the owner of the bank, he loves playing golf, so it's like a, just a detail. These are, I love these, these, these are the cleaning ladies. I said, uh, you know, there's too much dust on the table, can you please clean the table? So there's kind of a little bit of a... Now this, of course, you know, in Holland we all know this is the ING Bank. Um, and the interesting story about this is that on the, uh, on the boardroom, um, I said, yeah, what's going on there? There's, uh, there's a huge, you know, leather, and there were all these scratches on the boardroom. And I said, you know, what, what is it with these scratches? Well, so he said, well, oh, that's the lion. You, you know this advertising, when the lion walks in the building and goes to, onto the boardroom. And, and so we didn't have enough money to change that, they said. We didn't have enough money to, to buy another. Well, this is uh, Société Générale, also a very large uh, bank in... Uh, in France, um, the left and the right, both the, exactly the same room, not changed. This is the Royal Dutch Shell Group in, uh, in The Hague. Here you see the detail uh, of the yellow, uh, yellow chair. Uh, when the former CEO, Jeroen van der Veer, uh, took uh, office, his uh, secretary, she always uh, put the papers on the wrong, uh, wrong place. And then uh, Mr. van der Veer, he said, Oh, why don't we take a yellow chair and then you know exa exactly you know where to put it and it really fits well with the with the yellow and the red uh, you know colors of the shell group this is the uh, generali group group one of the largest insurance companies in europe and they have like four different boardrooms at uh, all different locations in italy but they wanted me to photograph this room because it's it's the plus uh, san marco it's the uh, most expensive real estate in italy so, again, a very, very uh, prestigious kind of setting. This is the Thiessen Group uh, in, uh, in uh, Germany, a very modest boardroom. And the story with Little House is that the Thiessen and Group merged together. And the old Little House there was the old headquarters of the Thiessen Group, which is a fascinating story. And when they, when they built these new headquarters, they moved that house from a certain location. They put it right below the, the boardroom. So the uh, top executives, when they have a meeting, they could look down and be remembered of the past of their co company. I think it's a beautiful uh, detail. So when I kind of um, finished the second project, I started to gather all that information and created kind of a laboratory in which I mixed all these kind of... Uh, so I tried to, to map it in, in a certain way. Here you see the cities, I think, where you could see where the centers of power had shifted. You see, for example, that Moscow, Norway, and Spain are playing uh, also a very important role in the economic landscape in, in Europe. And this is fascinating. You see the, the, the uh, Im improvement of the, of the revenue of the largest 40 companies in Europe on the left side 15 years ago and now. So it's not going that bad, I would say. And this is the, uh, the world. You see on the left side, uh, the 500 largest company in the world 15 years ago and now. And this is the, uh, the books that we you know, recently brought up. But anyway, this, this is it.